You all think the Arduino is a maker market. You're right about that. But actually, he has what us old timers might call a sub-assembly. You may not recognize Arduino as bringing that type of technology to you. So Gunnett's gonna explain how Arduino can support you in your next industrial application, give you a solution so that you can go and invent amazing things in your industrial projects. Absolutely. Over okay. to you. There, uh, over to me. Uh, well, first of all, welcome to Bear World. Austin, first time. Like you said, great barbecue, great bourbon, and good <laughs> electronics. Uh, what we're here to discuss today, guys, is, uh, of course, we use ourselves as very, very proudly as an open source platform for makers, tinkerers, educators, yep. students. So, you know, you're very familiar with the boards we've created and sold millions of. Absolutely. The Uno, right? Absolutely. So the Uno, which is a new rendition with a 32-bit Renaissance microcontroller. So this already takes you to a little bit more advanced than having a very small robot. Right? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I, did, yeah. I know that was a silly example. <laughs> no, it was great. It was great. Yeah. And then we also had uh, CAN, for example, in this, right? So you can actually do a lot of cool stuff on your automotive side. Right. You can do lights, blinking, lots of cool stuff that you wanted to do as a kid or as a grown-up. Yeah. I'd love to do it in my car. But what we did in Arduino was we realized that a lot of people don't want to stop there. And they don't want to stop there because it's easy. Like you said, it's a sub-assembly. You don't have to go down all the way and read 1,200 pages of an SD micro or an XP data sheet. I didn't say those words, but I did. Uh, but what you could do is you could use the same Arduino low-code approach and build enterprise applications. Yes. So we took this beautiful board that you're aware of. Yep. And we made it a little bit or a lot more industrial, 12-layer PCB and a very, very sophisticated, high-density, temperature ranges, 10-year life cycle, professional product, yep. industrial product. Yep. So in this case, you have variants which have a single-core M33 for design engineers. We have a dual-core STM at 7. You have an NXP microprocessor, or I.MX8. Right, so lots and of choice. And an STM, lots of choice. Lots, lots of choice. Lots of choice. Yep. But with the same exact experience of Arduino. Yeah. Right? So you're yep. going to get the ease of use. You get the same libraries yep. to download on GitHub. And blinking an LED with this is four lines of code versus 1,200 pages of a manual. <laughs> right? yep. um, and of course, if you want as a design engineer to go from the ease of Arduino into bare metal, you can. Yeah, It's still yep. the same SD, yep. NXP, Renaissance, Nordic yep. chips. So big, big question. I'm a design engineer. I probably grew up playing with this. Yeah. Because this was fun. Yeah. This was my, my introduction. Yeah. If you think we all grew up, but sure, I still haven't grown up. And then you think, okay, Arduino coming to me and saying, you know what? We've, sub assembly is a word that's, or a phrase that's not really used so much, but this essentially is what this is. Yeah. A you system on module or a sub assembly, uh, yeah, whatever yeah. we want to call it. So this is giving me a step up. Mm -hmm. This is giving me a start so that I can go and be creative and clever. Yep. Because everything's certified, everything works, yep. and I'm good to go. Yep. And I understand the infrastructure. I understand the, the, the MCUs are on there. I understand all the languages in there, and I'm good to go. Yep. So as a design engineer, I'm happy. And I walk into my boss's office. Yeah. <laughs> and I say, for my next project that we're going to make 10,000 industrial controllers on, yeah. I'm going to use Arduino. Uh-huh. And he's going to take one. And he's look at happy as hell. <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course, he's as happy as hell. He's going to go what? <laughs> Obviously, absolute. I mean, nothing could be more credible than that. Yeah. That that's real. Agreed. That's that that has changed the world. Agreed. Has helped change the world. Agreed. But when we start talking about this, yeah. This is when when you know tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of dollars are at stake. Yep. Somebody's got to make a big decision. Yep. To go with that. So there are lots of implications in there. There are lots of, for instance, supply chain management issues. Yep. There are what you talk about, um, reliability yep. issues. Yep, absolutely. Um, there are uh, you know, software issues. So if, if I'm that design engineer, I'm sold on, I'm going to evaluate that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to design it in next time because yeah. it saves me a shed load of time. Yep, and money and money, and I go to my head of design knowing, you're going to laugh at me, what answer do you give? Yeah, it's a, it's a really good question. So I think um, I'll, div I'll give you three buckets of you know, what you know, most people look at from an answer's perspective. 
bucket number one is how does this make my boss get faster to market? Excellent. Lower key cost, issue for an OEM, fast key to market. Fast to market. Because you know, we've seen people, if you have to start from the same chip, by the way, that's a beauty. The first thing is it's an Arduino board based on ST Micro NXP Renaissance. It's not based on some random chip, right? No. So you These are household, hardcore, institution, big. big big institutions, they kind of know what they're yeah. doing you know, to some extent outside yeah. of marketing. And they're in 80% of all industrial applications exactly. that exist in the world exactly. today. But the only difference is you have to do the entire sub-assembly and build this 12-layer complex PCB yourself, spend millions of dollars of NRE, months and months of engineering, which we have done for you because we sold 50 million of these. So we know what we're doing from a yep. sub-assembly perspective, yep. right? Yep. So we bring the best of the sub-assembly that you're used to with the best of the microcontroller and microprocessor from vendors and just cut short the time that you need to take to get to market. And as you know today, first movers sometimes make or break the whole market. Totally. Time to market is the most critical thing yeah, today. I've got an idea, how do I get it into customers' hands? Exactly. I mean, and we've seen up to maybe a couple of quarters where you've had a full product release which would take 18 to 24 months. Right. So we're talking about cutting the time by one third. Right. So right. already the smile is ever so slightly coming off the face of the head of engineering as he said, what? You're having a laugh, aren't you? Yeah, uh, maybe, maybe. I should consider you and not throw you out of the room. Yes, so <laughs> which is what we're trying to establish <laughs> here. <laughs> the second thing which is very important is uh, this gives you the industrial warranties, temperature ranges, customer support that you're used to from a big vendor. So this is not like you go to a forum or a GitHub and you find something which went wrong. We actually have a full enterprise support. We guarantee 10 years of life cycle of this product. 10 years? 10 years of component warranty. We guarantee two years of failure and RMA, free of cost replacement. Yep. And we have all major distributors you know of, Avnet, Arrow, Future, you know, Symmetry, anybody you're looking at which would actually carry this, Tijiki, Mauser, RS Components, so all the household names that you would buy your industrial components from carry it because they believe in the line. Yep. So there's no shortage of components, there's no shortage of supply chain. Yep. So you know you basically get so everything So this isn't want. actually left field at all? No, no. Not if even you, in the slightest? Not even the slightest from a, yep. just how you do business. Yeah. Right? So yep. you, bu you already buy all of that anyway. Exactly. The only so thing you're doing is you're buying it all together in one sub-assembly. Totally. Instead of doing this, you know, by yourself. Yes. And doing it again and again for every project. Yes. And design engineers, as you all know, hate that. Yes. Because after to go reinvent the wheel again for the next project, not anymore. Yeah. But you get all the benefits that you're usually used to from doing business with a big vendor. Obviously, there's some supply chain man management in there. Of course. But again, managing those relationships, if you were buying, you know, I'm making facts up again, but... 80% of semiconductors are sold to distribution. Um, that's the only way this industry works. Yep. So unless you're Apple or Audi. Yeah, you don't get the entire supply chain. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> well, even Audi found out there they don't get it either. <laughs> but anyway, you've got to manage a supply yeah. chain of distribution. You've got to have discussions about uh, you yep. know, where, where they're getting the product, when the supply is going to arrive, is there pricing guarantees. Agreed. All of those things. Agreed. And what Ardu Arduino is saying is ah, you don't need any of that. It's all, it, it's all pre-agreed, pre-packaged, ready to go. Exactly. So number one, it's cheaper and f faster. Number two, it's exactly what you're used to from an enterprise with yep. us doing all the hard work. The third thing, which is very interesting, is now you get into this whole world of not having to be dependent on one vendor. Because this exact... Apart from you, of course. <laughs> yeah, uh, no, not even us, because we're open source. Oh, okay, all right. So you can yes. get us some schematics and you can move yep. to whatever you want to move. Yes. So you're not stuck on us. Yep. You're not stuck on STM. You're not stuck on NXP. You're not stuck on Renaissance because we allow the portability of actually moving to any silicon vendor based on your supply chain. Right. So right. you aren't chained. You aren't chained. That's a really good way to put it. I'm going to copy that. You aren't chained. <laughs> you aren't locked. Yeah. I think that kind of gets people's or uh, the you know management's attention saying, ah, oh, because during the pandemic, almost everybody faced a shortage. Yes, they did. Everybody faced a shortage, and for them to move from one architecture to the next architecture would be the, a nightmare. did the semiconductor manufacturers take advantage of that lack of availability? Slightly. In oh, the, a lot. <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't say that. And I think that's what the management attention will get, right? Say, oh, you know, I have more resilience in my supply yes. chain. Yes. I have more resilience and lack of dependency on one vendor. You know, it's okay to be dependent on two or three vendors, but not one. And I think that's where there are a lot of people were stuck, right? Right.
And I think that's the beauty of, I feel, what we're trying to do. Of course, it's state of the art from a tech perspective. You know, design engineers will like the latest and greatest of the semiconductors in there. You know, we also have these really cool, God, you should see this, these are post-it stamp size sensor boards. Right, nice. AI ready. So this what does AI ready mean? Uh, you can run algorithms because it's a dual core STM running on this little small guy yeah. with nine or 10 different sensors. So this guy has vibration, six axis IMUs, temperature, humidity, dangerous gases. Like this is a lot of stuff packed into this. That's very cool. And you could do it, but we've just done two years of R&D for you. Why would you? Why would you? Why would you? Latest and greatest Bosch sensors, latest and greatest STM you know, yep. chipset. In some cases, super ultra low power Nordic in some cases that we yep. have with camera modules too. Right, to so I mean, sorry, but we, we, we started talking about this little fella here. Uh, and we went to even littler fellas. And then we went to even little, littler fellas. So, all, so that's got a little camera on it. Yeah, two megapixel camera. Time of flight sensor, six axis IMU, and you know, a microphone. Right. How with an SDM. Uh, at volume or 45 bucks. Okay. And this is the same, uh, 35, 40 bucks, and with the latest and greatest Bosch MEMS on it. Yeah. So I think all we're doing is taking the most, most u uh, common use cases. The obvious. The obvious use cases, yeah. thank you. And yeah. building what you call sub-assemblies or system yeah. on modules for it. Yes, let's call them, the modern word is system, system on module, isn't Soms. it? Soms, That's yes. the modern word. Yes. That's it's only, only old fellows with white beards who call them sub-assemblies. So let's just, let's just reflect quickly. You're walking in. You feel you're going to get laughed at. Yeah, and you will for the first two minutes. And then? Then you say, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Cheaper, faster. Time to market. Time to market is super, super critical. I can do that with everything you're used to from an enterprise business perspective, support temperature ranges, certifications, anything and everything. And oh, by the way, you're not dependent on one vendor. No. And you have resilience on your supply chain. Yes. So it's you're not a stuck. 10-year resilience. Exactly. I, I mean, you, there, I mean if, if you were building that today, to get a 10-year resilience on every single person that's on that board, I would suggest is probably impossible. Or very expensive because you have to do a lifetime buy. Yeah. Which you don't with us. Which you're not. Which you, but you're not going to do that anymore. Exactly. I mean, we're talking time to markets. We're talking. You, you're exactly. wandering around an embedded world. They can't see beyond 12, 18 months. Quite yeah. frankly, so you're not. I mean, even even automotive doesn't commit to. 100 percent. 100 percent. So, so 100%. that's gone. That's out. That's gone. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Well, I think that. Uh, if you have considered Arduino as being your growing up platform, your introduction, your maker, your fun, it's still all of that. It's still yeah. the most wonderful. Yeah, we still have those. We still have those. It's still the most wonderful, incredible, learning, creative platform that you could ever have. You probably never considered that for your industrial application. And Gunnar here has just given us where that has become that, and then, for real fun, becomes that with a camera, and that with every sensor you could ever think of. So when you walk into the design boss's office, and you think, ha, huh, you always laugh at me, well, I'll take the smile off your face, because I'm gonna prove to you that Arduino is the obvious choice for my next industrial application, so that you and him or her can go and create amazing industrial products because all the hard work, the time to market, the efficiency, making sure the supply chain is absolutely assured, and you don't have to stick to Arduino if this starts because you're not chained. Yeah. But let's be honest, you're not going to go anywhere else.